one of the companies behind some of the keyring cameras that I've reviewed in the past got in touch to ask whether I'd be interested in reviewing their latest mini camera. They'd managed to add some interesting features into it, namely Wi-Fi and a fully waterproof case. That sounds quite good, I thought. They said, yes, we're going to call it the 80826 version 3. I said, hold on a minute, yes, I'll review it, but you've got to come up with a better name than that. How about, off the top of my head, I thought, the Nautilus camera. Nautilus named after Jules Verne's Captain Nemo's submarine, which in turn is named after the sea creature. I thought that indicates that it goes underwater, gives it a bit of an interesting name. Good idea, they said. We'll call it the Nautilus cam. And sure enough, a couple of weeks later, a box turns up containing the Nautilus cam. Now, that is the only association I've had with the manufacturer. There's no money changed hands or anything like that. They just sent me this camera over to review. So let's have a good look at it. Back of the box seems to indicate that pretty much it is an 80826 in a different case with Wi-Fi. So we're expecting maybe the performance is going to be a little bit out of date because the 26 came out quite a while ago. But let's have a look anyway. Inside the box here, we've got the camera in the top. It's a metal bodied camera. I'll show you more of that in a second. And then in the bottom, we've got a few different wires. Now, the first thing is the instruction leaflet on the left there, just a little pamphlet gets you going, that's all you need. The thing I wanted to point out, the USB cable. I'm afraid they're using that same USB cable I've used in the past where it's got that non-standard connector on the camera's end, which is pretty hard to get hold of. It's just not a normal micro USB that you can get in a shop or even a mini USB. And that's the audio and video out lead. Got a little bit of Velcro here, sticky back stuff, just to hold to the camera if you want to. That is an extra door for the back of the camera, a rubber door. And um, there's the camera itself, of course. Now it's in its plastic cradle at the minute, which has got a tripod screw hole on the bottom there. More about that later on though. But we'll just get it out of that uh, case for a moment so that's just pretty much the thing where you can put straps through or attach a tripod to the bottom of it and hold the camera nice and steady and that holds the camera in those plastic legs that grip the sides of it now we've got three buttons on the camera here with an led at the top we've got power mode and record at the top there near the led uh, of course lens on the front pretty much nothing else going on on the camera no mic hole because of course that would let water in that's inside the rubber door at the back I'll show you what's in there actually so this rubber door here it's um it's an interesting thing it's kind of shoved inside the camera a little bit and you have to peel it off so you need a fingernail to get in there now looking inside the back of here there's not much going on again that hole probably lets the sound in but it's also for another purpose I'll show you in a minute that's a USB and micro SD slot there I put a 32 gig class 10 card in mine so the other door you notice that has a sticky out bit on if you get a paper clip or something, you can push that into the hole that was on the left of the back of the camera, which means the door doesn't fall off the camera when you open it. The other one comes off completely. So you've got one door with that sticky out bit and one without. I prefer to use one without because it just seems to go on a little bit easier, a little bit flusher to the back of the camera. So once that's in place, let's just have a look how the camera operates. Well, the first thing is to switch it on, you've got to hold down the power button for about three seconds. It feels quite a long time actually when you're doing it, but at least it means you're not going to switch it on in your pocket. The buttons are all rubberized, um, so they do need a bit of pressure to press them down, but they seem to work quite well. So there you go, you got the red light on, which means it's powered up. Now in the settings, I've configured my camera not to start recording when you turn it on, but when you get it out of the box when it's new, it will automatically start recording. Obviously pressing the mode button switches between 720p 60, photo mode, motion activation mode which is that one there which sort of starts automatically sometimes which is a bit annoying to get past but when you get back round again you're back to 1080p 30 so those are your three modes 1080p 30 720p 60 photo mode and i suppose on top of it we've got that motion activation mode so to start recording press the shutter button red light flashes while it's recording press it again red light solid when it's off 720p 60 there into photo which is the yellow light every time we press that shutter button take another still and then we've got to skip past that motion activation mode back to the red light again at the beginning. And to turn it off, hold down the power button for about three or four seconds and eventually the camera switches off. So that's pretty much all the controls on the camera. Not really much to say about that. Uh, let's just try using the Wi-Fi. Now you'll need this app, iSmartDV, which you can download from the App Store, at least for the iPhone you can. I'm sure it's on Android as well. Hold down the mode button once you've got the camera powered on for about five seconds the light slightly changes color from being red to this kind of pinkish color 
Um, I think there's supposed to be two LEDs on there, which basically means that the Wi-Fi is now on. You'll see it pop up. There you are, Action DVR. Now, I've already entered the password for it. Mine's set to be eight zeros, I think, but you can change that later on if you want. So there you are. It's connected up there to my Wi-Fi. And as you can see, using the app, we've got a live viewfinder with a little bit of lag, although I did find this quite reliable as far as these Wi-Fi apps go. And then when you press the record button, we're still getting a live feed through to the phone over the Wi-Fi connection. But as you can see, bit of lag, catches up every now and then, and this isn't a great distance. Again, it's really just for framing your image, uh, which I did use it for that, it's quite handy. Now in the settings on here, those are the only settings you can change on the camera through the app, or at least those are the only way that I can find to change settings through the app. Anyway, there's not much on there at all. Down at the bottom here, we can go into things we've recorded earlier on. So we can get into the videos and stills. I'll load up as thumbnails on the screen here. Uh, there you go. Again, Wi-Fi apps, I'm never a big fan of these, but if you just have a phone and you want to get the footage off your camera, it's a good way to do it if you don't have an SD card reader or a compatible phone that would work with the uh, files off the camera. So yeah, pick a photo there, for example, download it, goes into my photo library, and there you go, I can see it now on the camera. Works the same as all of them. So let's have a look at some sample clips. Uh, usual disclaimers apply, YouTube can mess these up a bit. But uh, the first thing is I put the camera in the car went out the time was set wrong um, and also I noticed a bit of oddness with the color I've got a red car by the way it looks orange in the pictures here the colors have a tendency to go towards yellow on the spectrum a kind of warm uh, thing but also a bit washed out at the same time but as you can see it's quite sharp um, but look at the sky on the right here and these white buildings we're definitely bleaching a lot of stuff out it's overexposing things so out of the box the exposure set at zero seemed to be too high on my camera so I had to adjust that in the settings but I'll show you a couple more shots I, I shot while it was in that so this is exposure zero usual shot here that I take in the RDL that's a 1080p 30 and then we'll do a 720p 60 which I'll show you does crop in towards the center of the image there you go so it is a proper 60 frames a second but it's a reduced frame on that one it's quite narrow which is quite difficult to frame without using the wi-fi app which i was doing to get these shots as you can see they're quite well framed so yeah this is uh, again with the exposure not messed around with but now i got the camera changed the settings took the exposure down by a full one and this is what it looks like with the exposure minus one as you can see it doesn't seem to have any impact in low light it still looks the same as it did before um, all you can do with the exposure, you can't knock it down by half or a quarter. There's various steps and I've knocked it down by a full minus 1.0. So that's what you're looking at now. And again, we're back in the Arndale again, so you can see what it looks like there. So I was just trying to take off that kind of bleached out effect that I was getting earlier on. And um, hopefully it's reduced it down a little bit. So we've got more natural kind of uh, light levels, although the colors again, still quite washed out. Uh, look at this though, the camera's got an orientation sensor when i flip the camera upside down see the video there went back the right way up again without a break in the video the video just carried on recording but flipped itself i'll do it again so you can see there you go so that's quite an interesting feature you can mount the camera the other way up and it'll automatically just adjust itself now this is a nice uh, sunny day here so a good uh, opportunity to get a nice shot nice bright area uh, you can see again quite sharp as far as the brickwork goes and things but too bleached out those signs in between the pillars on the building there there's actually stuff written on those and you can't see it now let's go to 720p 60 and see what it looks like on there uh, you get a much narrower field of view on 720p 60 but you will better read these signs there you go you can see there's a little bit of information on there now which you couldn't see before in the 1080p 30 mode so that's a bit strange isn't it? the 1080p 30 is more bleached out than 720p 60. Now let's look at those foam boxes for a second over there because again you don't remember we talked about the red color before being a bit orangey and a bit washed out and you can see there those should be bright kind of ruby red colors and they just look a bit pale a bit like they've been bleached in the sun but more on that later on let's walk through this uh, new part that they've added onto the library here which is all very nice and uh, you can see how the camera adjusts as we go inside into a bit of a lower light environment seems okay we've got a nice uh, mirrored roof in there so yeah, as you can see when you're walking with this camera, quite a lot of shake. I'm really trying to hold it steady. More about that later on, but this camera really doesn't like being shaken around. 
Now I did manage to find someone playing some music in Albert Square, so we'll just have a listen to that for a moment. But it's important to remember that this is a waterproof camera, so there's not much sound gets into the case when it's fully waterproof. This is recorded with the rubber waterproof cap removed off the back of the camera. Now it's not completely apparent here, but the sound that's recorded on the camera is too loud when the cap is removed and too quiet when the cap is on. This next scene will give you more of an idea. Did you come here for forgiveness? Or did you come to raise the dead? Or did you come here to play Jesus? To the levels in your head Did I ask too much? More than a lot You gave me nothing but All I got I've got nothing to say We'll get to kill each other Kill each other so we've mentioned that this camera is an update to the 80826 camera and I'm sure it's got pretty much the same internals as that particular model and you can tell a little bit from the vertical lines that are going very diagonal here that the sensor in the camera is a little bit slow. It feels a couple of years out of date perhaps and that's why we're getting these effects of the washed out colours etc. One thing though, I did take some stills with the camera and the stills didn't look too bad. One of the things I did notice in particular was the fact that the colours seemed quite a bit richer in the stills. Of course, they're 4-3 ratio, but look at those foam boxes again there. I did take a couple of stills on the same spot, and that's the colour that those things should be. Let's compare it again with the video from before. Yeah, so I'm not sure really why the video is so washed out when obviously the sensor can pick up those colours. Now, I did mention you have to hold the camera very steady, and that is one thing about this. You can get some pretty decent shots. You can get some nice sharp images. The colours are off, but as soon as you start shaking the camera around because of perhaps that slow sensor, things start wobbling a little bit much. You get CMOS wobble. People thought I was on about something out of the sea, but I mean CMOS wobble. But if we just freeze this for a second, so just a random frame, and then zoom in a bit, you can see how much detail there is in just a single frame out of the video. So there's quite a lot of detail in there. It's just a shame that basically the sensor's a little bit slow and the colors are a bit washed out. Now I tried taking the camera out on the bike and I put the camera on the handlebars, attached it into its tripod mount and just look what happens here. Because of the vibrations, it thinks the camera's upside down and tries to adjust the video accordingly. And as you can see, it is vibrating around a lot, but I put other cameras in this position, including the Sony camera when I did that review and it's nowhere near as wobbly as this. So the camera does not like wobbling or vibrations. So to counteract those, uh, when I parked up the bike, I took the camera out of the position. I could see it was shaking around quite a bit and duct taped it to the top of my motorcycle helmet, which of course will reduce the vibrations because the body dampens those vibrations down. And as you can see, if you put it in a position that where there's no vibrations, it doesn't actually look again half bad. Of course, if we're being critical, we've still got the bleached out skies the muted colours erring towards the yellow end of the palette, but compared to what we were looking at before, it's a big improvement. Now the camera's main feature of course, waterproof, which you don't get on other mini cameras like this in a waterproof case, so as you can see it can take a heavy shower, which is what you'd do if you maybe had mounted it on your motorcycle helmet and got caught out in the rain, you wouldn't damage your camera. Of course it is properly waterproof not just water resistant so let's just chuck it in this bucket here i don't really do any water-based activities so i can't take it diving or anything to show you something like that but it will go five meters underwater according to the specs on the back of the box anyway last time i did a, a water test and stuck a camera in a bucket someone complained so i thought i'll try and do something a little bit more exciting i put a model car in the bath here yeah not that exciting is it but gives you an idea i suppose how the focus works on the camera of course it isn't autofocus it's a fixed focus camera like all these mini cameras and underwater things seem to be quite a bit out of focus I thought well, I'll move the camera further away 
and yeah still out of focus there now of course it should go without saying but the wi-fi won't work through water if you put the camera under water you lose your wi-fi signal uh, as i found out while i was testing it trying to get this frame properly but it looks okay but as you can see as soon as i take it out of the water everything's nice and sharp and in focus again so water really does blur up the images now let's go on about those settings when you put the sd card in the camera you get these folders created on it there's card, DV, event, JPEG, and video. Obviously, video and JPEG are your video and JPEGs. Event, if you bang the camera, there's a sensor in there, which will put those files into the event folder. And card DV, if you were to use it as a dash cam, which it will work, you'd need a special lead for that, those files would go in there. To change the settings, that little text file, if you open it up in a text editor, you'll see this thing. It looks a bit daunting, but don't worry about it. There's not that much there. You see at the top here, here are the settings for the camera, the kind of things that we can change. And then at the bottom, it explains what numbers you have to put next to those to change them. For example, we can change the image size for the stills at the top there. If you were doing seamless recording, you can change the length of those. G sensor, we can turn that off if we want. And then we could have the stamp on there to put the time and date on or turn the stamp off password for the wi-fi you know a few different things there all the things are on the screen there the things that you can change and you can see the exposure value at the bottom i put a two in there which made it into a minus one on the exposure value so those are all the things there change your update to yes at the top take the sd card out of your computer or put the file onto the card or whatever put the card back in the camera switch it on and then you get the new settings on the camera it does seem to work quite well now, since we've got a video out lead in the box, we might as well plug it into the television, see what happens. As you can see, we've got a live video feed coming out of the camera at the moment. So we'll press the record button and see if we can record at the same time. And yes, we can. You can see on screen there, on the television screen at the top, we've got the timer counting up. And you can see also along the top what mode you're in, things like that. You've got the time and date at the bottom as well as the battery. Of course, if you're doing this, you can't charge the camera at the same time because there's only one USB plug on there unless you made up a special lead, I suppose, for yourself. Right, now if we go through the modes here, you can see we're in 720p60 there, photo mode, we could use all those whilst having the video on, and then of course we'll get into the playback menus, where you can choose between those event videos, those are the ones when the shock sensor was activated, the normal videos, and your normal stills. So if we go into the normal videos here, you can see on screen a load of different files I've recorded, it gives you an idea as to the time and date and things, and there you go, press play, you can play back the video. It's pretty difficult navigating using those three buttons you keep pressing the wrong one jumping yourself out of the menu you can't seem to jump forward and back from clips but it does work now when i recorded the car footage i'd put the camera on its supplied mount use the tripod screw hole to attach a suction cup to it and of course the camera reorients the video the correct way up even though the camera's upside down however if you're using it as a dash cam you'll need to get a separate special dash cam lead for these cameras that goes into that non-standard usb port I'm pretty sure someone would want to see what the Nautilus looks like next to the Mobius camera. So here they are side by side, as you can see, virtually the same height when you include the lens on the Mobius. The Nautilus is a little bit thicker and it's made out of metal, so it's heavier. It's about 50% heavier than the Mobius camera. In fact, if we go into those weights, you're looking at 2.23 ounces, which is 63.4 grams. Let's just carry on with a couple of stats. The files are MOVs, but they're, according to QuickTime anyway, iCache AVCC files. 1080p30 uses a variable bit rate of 17.8 megabits a second. You can read the other information down below on the screen, of course, including the battery life, 1 hour 50 with the Wi-Fi switched off. Now, the thing that I had a real issue with on this camera was that LED. I just couldn't see it outside, which meant that the footage you're looking at now of me filming some fountains with a camera you'll never see because I thought I was recording it and in fact I wasn't I couldn't tell whether the light was on or off on the camera in fact most of my videos start like this because I was covering the camera up trying to see if that LED was on or not and even covering it up outside it was very difficult to spot that's not the only issue I also had a problem with the tripod screw mount I actually snapped that as you can see at the bottom all the way around just by screwing it onto the mount on the motorbike so they really could do with making that quite a bit stronger now of course the fact that the camera is waterproof is great but of course it has a knock-on effect on the sound quality and it basically makes the sound unlistenable it turns out the Wi-Fi was a welcome addition because I couldn't see when the camera was recording or not, just using the light on it. I often recorded by using the Wi-Fi app, which made it more obvious. 
I'm surprised though that they've stuck with that non-standard little USB port on there. It really does make things quite a bit more difficult than it needs to be. Anyway, let's have a look at the overall scores. I've gone straight down the middle on this, amber, but with a few sort of caveats. The reason the physical one is amber is because I broke the mount and I wasn't really being rough with it. I was just screwing it onto something, so that needs sorting out. As far as the menus and things go, well, these cameras always use those text files. So as long as you're OK with that, there's no problem. And the camera does seem to work quite well with its buttons and stuff. The only problem is I couldn't see when it was recording due to that very faint LED. And of course, video and audio quality, quite difficult. This nice and sharp, the video quality, but the colours are very much off. And of course, audio is pretty much useless. So I was a bit halfway whether I should go red on that or not. But in the end, I've kind of erred towards amber. But you can make your own decision up about the video and audio quality I think from looking at this video. I think it's possible I'm a little bit guilty of expecting a bit too much out of this camera. After all it is just a version 3 of the 80826 camera albeit with two interesting features added both of which seem to work quite well and that might be enough for most people. So if you want to get hold of one of these I've got links to purchase them in the video description where you'll also find some downloadable samples. But that's it for the moment. As always thanks for watching.